on, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of JAR. JAR, for those of you that may be new, stands for Joe. And Amy. Review. This is our weekly show where we review the magic stories. And it's definitely weekly. We didn't take two weeks off because we had a lot of things going on. <laughs> Don't worry about it. But that being said, if you missed last week's or, yeah, last week's Thursday video, you're going to want to check it out right up there. It's kind of behind us on the set already. It's a new edition if you haven't seen it. But if you're interested in trading card games or card games in general, uh, and you're interested in possibly getting discounts on a starter set of a new card game or newer card game, you're going to want to check that video out. Shoutouts to uh, Varia and Guildhouse Games. Even if you don't feel that interested, you should check it out anyway. It's true. It was really good. Because you <clears throat> might be interested by the end of it. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Exactly. Uh, and so we are here this week to review The Rise of Kozilek by Kelly Diggs. Now, this is the continuation of our Battle for Zendikar slash Oath of the Gatewatch story reviews. Um, so if you've missed those, maybe I'll put those in the top corner as well. Give you a I bit of a... Out. Yes, exactly. So we have a full Context playlist of those. Important. Yeah, exactly. Well, and especially <laughs> with this one, because The Rise of Kozilek, despite the name, is mostly a story about Kiora. Right. And uh, we'll get to that in a minute. First of all, or uh, uh, as we before we get into it, just a reminder: if you have not subscribed already, super helpful to us if you would do that. And then if you ring the bell, super helpful to you because you'll get notifications whenever any of our videos come out, including more jars, uh, as well as whenever we go live, which is on stream every Monday and Friday, 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern Time. If you're a fan of Magic, we play MTG Arena on Mondays, and on Fridays we play video games. This Friday we will be continuing Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi 2 as we've been playing through the entire Dragon Ball Z Budokai franchise for the PS2. Uh, and this is our fifth of six games, and we are getting towards the end of this fifth one, which means we'll be moving on to the sixth and final soon. So. There's only one more? Yeah, that's it. Wow. There were three Budokai and three Tenkaichi, so, yeah. Anyway, so... I thought there was, like, a whole bunch more. I mean, you know, there's been a lot, and this one has definitely been the longest by far, yeah. is, is uh, Tenkaichi 2. But, <laughs> but yeah, so but uh, we would love it if you would come join us for any and everything that we make. Um, and if we are live, you are always more than welcome to come into chat and uh, chat with us. We would love to hear Please from you. Please do. Yeah. Uh, Amy is, is usually the one I'm in the, the chat, so... the gatekeeper of the chat. <laughs> the gatekeeper? I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm the keeper of the chat. Anyway... So, we are here for this story this week. Uh, my quick review at the top is, this story was great. Yeah. Uh, I love this story. It's yeah. Really good. It, it tied in a lot of things. There's some stuff I want to talk about, and we'll get to it in the review itself. But, in general, my quick review is, it was, it was really good. And yeah. you, you should read it, especially if you've been following along with these. And especially if you are in any way intrigued by Kiora as a character, or really any of the Eldrazi. Like, specifically... Ulog and Kozilek more so than Emrakul, but Amy's going to say just, you know, Emrakul's the best, so. Yeah, by far. <laughs> so, uh, uh, the reason that we do our quick review is so that you can go read the story for yourself. Uh, I will say the top link down below in the description will take you to this story. It's an older one, so it might be a little bit tougher to, like, wade through all of it. Don't worry, we did it for you. Yeah. Um, so click that top link in the description if it's something that you're interested in reading for yourself. There are other things down in the description, too, other channels that we have in our socials. So check those out also. But uh, if you want to read this story for yourself, and then, of course, we would love it if you would come back here and join us for our review. So, on to said full review itself. The last video, uh, or the last jar that we did for the last story... I mentioned at the end that I was curious about what was going on with Kiora, because it had been a while since we'd seen her. There yeah. was, like, the big meeting of the Planeswalkers in the, the lighthouse or whatever, and they were arguing with one another, and Kiora was like, well, I'm going to go kill them. You guys don't want to kill Ulamog, but I'm going to go kill Ulamog, so Yeah, she was, bye. like, the token <laughs> character that comes in, like, in the leather jacket with, like, the toothpick sticking out of the mouth and just, like... Yeah, no, I'm not really going to listen to whatever you guys are saying. I'm going to go do my own thing. Mm -hmm. I'm a lone wolf. Well, a lone wolf that <laughs> tried to get other people to join her, well, and they yeah. didn't. Um, and so, yes, then she was a lone wolf. But also still not a lone wolf because she was with the tricksters, but right. regardless. But that's essentially being a lone wolf. Right, well, she was their leader or whatever, so, yeah. Because, you know, they're... they're she didn't have much of a chance, but let's get let's get to that. Well, but that's and that's why I mentioned last week that I wanted to see her because I I wanted to know what was going on with her, where she had been, and 
because we hadn't heard about her in any of these stories of, like, they're capturing Ulamog, and now this thing is appearing, which we find out is Kozilek, but, like, we haven't heard about Kiora at all. So I'm sitting there going, okay, but what about Kiora, though? Where is she? So now we've gotten that context, which also, I mean, shout-outs to the, um, the authors, because... If you're sitting there going, I wonder what's going on with this character, and then the next thing you find out is what's going on with that character. It's almost like it's well written. It shows it shows good writing that <laughs> that that kind of a question comes up and then immediately gets um, gets you know discussed or talked about or whatever. So um, then we have uh, so as I mentioned, this story has Kiora, it has the tricksters, it has. Like, her regular sea denizens, her sea creatures, her sea monsters, whatever you want to call them, that she was using oh, to fight the Eldrazi. Sea, I thought you meant, like, sea listers, and I was like, oh no, you did Oh yeah, sea listers. Well, I mean, compared <laughs> to Lorthos later, yeah, maybe they're sea listers in comparison, mm -hmm. but Lorthos is kind of a big deal. Yeah. Um, and so, of course, Kiora... kind of big. <laughs> Kiora summons Lorthos, um, this, like, ancient being of the deep... One of the oldest creatures on Zendikar, possibly. He's an octopus. And it's a it's a Krakeny thing, um, which is awesome. Amy loves octopi. If you didn't get that, uh, <laughs> too much. <laughs> a lot of a lot of this story, in the first like three quarters, focuses on Kiora being that leather jackety character, externally, and even like front of her mind internally, but once she kind of thinks about it for a little while, she second-guesses herself a lot. Yeah. Internally. And so that happens with Lorthos at first, where she's like super cocky about being able to summon Lorthos, but also slightly unsure if it's the right call or if it's going to even work right. or whatever. Like maybe Lorthos will come and kill us all, <laughs> and yeah. then no one will fight Kozilek, and uh, Lorthos will just fuck off. <laughs> well, and at that point, don't forget, Kozilek didn't exist yet. It, it, at, oh, yeah, at, that's like, true. That's I mean, true. didn't exist, but like it wasn't Ulamog. present yet. It was, right, it was specifically Ulamog. Then, when she notices that Ulamog was actually trapped, she starts mocking the fact that Ulamog got trapped. She's happy that it worked, but she's, like, mocking Ulamog. She's like, wow, you know, big bad Eldrazi... Big bad god, you know, where are you now? You got tricked, you're trapped, ha. But at the same time, in the next breath, in her head, she's like, he is kind of big, though. Like, that's a problem, right? We know this is a problem. He's real big. So, again, it's more of the same, of, like, being cocky, being sure of herself, but really not being sure of herself. And it's, it's, go ahead. Well, I, I feel like there's an element of leadership to that, right? She's got sure. these people that she's got to incentivize to help her with this, and she's got to be a leader to them. Sure. So she's got to, you know, outwardly be confident about things she's maybe not as confident about inwardly. Spoilers to, to folks out there if you're interested. You don't have to do that to be a leader. I'm not no. contradicting your point, <laughs> and by any means. You do. But just FYI, like, <laughs> as a leader, especially depending on the team that you have, your team might respect you more if you tell them that, hey, I'm real nervous about this. I don't know if it's going to work, but I still think it's the best course of action. And you, like, explain your, your actions and, like, defend your actions. That... Or if you ask your people that are following you for suggestions of how to best move forward. Yeah. Uh, you yeah, know, if you... Because you're saying, look, I'm really nervous about this. I don't know what to do. We've got this one plan in place, but we need some backups. What do you got? Yeah, and it, like if you trust your team, if you gathered your team together because of their skills, and, and so you trust them in that regard, it would probably make sense that you could look to them for certain things. And then as the leader, you know, if you get conflicting ideas, mm. it's your job then to work on the compromise or whatever the case may be. But, yeah, it's okay. Or say, no, this one's definitely the better one. This one's right. definitely not going to work. Right. But as a leader, it's okay to say that you don't know or that you're afraid as long as you're still willing to move forward and you're not just going to go, well, I'm afraid. I'm going to go sit over here in the field position. Good luck. Yeah. Right? Y'all fight it out. <laughs> <laughs> um, so then we get the Kozilek moment. Cozy comes out. And we'll talk about this in a minute, but 
Um, Shen, as one of the name tricksters, there were two name tricksters, I didn't write the second one's name down, it's not really as important, but um, Shen becomes brainwashed, taken over, something to that effect, by Kozilek's presence, um, and attempts to attack Kiora. Kiora, feeling that there was no other way to handle it, kills Shen by stabbing him in the torso with the Bident, which I liked the way that that was described in that she was like, the Bident can't help me here, but it's still a weapon. And it's going to work like any other weapon to stab, right? Like it's the weapon of a god, so it was able to summon Lorthos, but at the same time, you can still just stab the shit out of somebody with it because well, it's I mean, still a pointy stick. <laughs> Shen was Shen. Yeah. Yes, Shen was brainwashed, but Shen's body didn't become impervious to things just because of Kozilek. Sure. Like, <laughs> stabbing it with a Biden is still going to kill Shen. <laughs> no, that's fine. I, well, I guess what I was getting at was I, I really appreciated the fact that because the Biden is supposed to, especially for Kiora, right? Kiora has staked everything on this, like, the, the fact that she has this weapon. She can kill Ulamog with it. She feels like she might be able to kill Kozilek with it. I don't know that she says that, but still. She's, like, super cocky about it. Like, it'll be all the Eldrazi. It can summon Lorthos. She can control Lorthos or ask for Lorthos's help. Right. Um, as opposed to, like, commanding it. Um... And so with that, she feels super powerful because of it. And yet kind of has to come to the realization of like, oh, right, it's also still a weapon. Stab. Like, right. because to her, it's like this, this like omnipotent thing, right? right? It's a god killer. But it also can just stab someone. And she needs to like take a moment to be like, all right. It can also work as a weapon, okay. and I just, I really liked it. I thought that was and a, that of course, was cool. by the end, that dynamic changes as well. Correct. And I think, I think it's kind of ironic okay. how she sits there saying, gods are only gods because they're powerful, right? And, and we can do anything we want to gods. We'll, you know, we'll take them down a peg. And yet she holds this gods Biden in such high esteem as though, okay, well, I stole this weapon from a god, so therefore this is the weapon that I will use to kill gods. Sure. And it's like, okay, but your whole point is that gods ain't shit. And so, why is this Biden shit? Hmm. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, sure. I mean, I think, I think it more has to, well, yeah. I see your point. I think it's just more of the fact that, like, you can't kill Ulamog with a sword. No, right? Yeah. Like. So, uh, you but, know. I mean, realistically, you couldn't kill it with the Biden either. That may. Crosses or not. That may, in fact, be <laughs> the theme of the story. <laughs> so, I mean, it just circles back to her having to learn that that leather jacket needs to be shed. Right. I also, uh, we talked about this a little bit before we uh, started the video, but I thought it was interesting that Kiora in talking to her tricksters before all this happens. She's is like bad-mouthing the Planeswalker's plan of trapping Ulamog, right? Because her whole thing is she's like, well, look, we could trap it, sure, but we're going to kill it. Like, if we get the opportunity, we're going to kill him because trapping him, it's just not going to be enough. They tried to do it once before, and here we are. Right. So, it didn't really work. Right. I mean, it worked for a period of time until it stopped working. Right. And, because, and that I completely get. Sure. And and because they're planeswalkers that are making this plan, Gideon, Jace, Nissa, etc., she makes a point of saying that they can leave whenever they want. So, of course, this is going to be their plan. Not knowing or not really focusing on the fact that Nissa is one of them, Nissa, like, one of the most loyal people to Zendikar as a, as a plane, and really only doing this to save Zendikar. That's the whole point. Um, but Kiora doesn't, either doesn't know or really just doesn't give a damn about that. I think she just doesn't really know Nissa. I mean, for the most part, I think people don't. Right. You know, because Nissa's so, so um, antisocial. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, her, her friends are... Zendikar itself and not the people of Zendikar. Sure. And, uh, and so, but you brought up an interesting point with her saying, with Kiora saying that, you know, the planeswalkers could leave whenever they wanted to. So of course their idea is just, well, we'll just trap it here and then leave it alone because, mm -hmm. you know, 
chasing it off world is a bad idea. And Kiora's like, if it, if it goes off world, holding up the Biden, I'll follow it. And so, of course, all the merfolk are like, great. All the tricksters that she's with are like, great. Get it the hell out of here. We don't care. Right. Because they then it's not on here. Zendikar anymore. Right. So, um, but, but your point was that Kiora could just leave as well at any, at any given time. Right. And you're the same as they are, you know, you're also right. a planeswalker. Right. And I think my point was like, she was clearly just saying that for like propaganda purposes, just to be like, they're the bad ones, but I have a great idea. And, and I feel less <laughs> that way. I think it's, it, you know, she's sitting there saying, yes, they can leave whenever they want. I mean, she can too. Obviously she can go to Theros and, you know, fight Fassa and <laughs> steal Fassa's fucking Biden, mm -hmm. but, um, she's not going to like, sure. like, yes, she went and stole the Biden, but you know, Zendikar's her home. She cares about it. Well, her she sister's about, here. Her sister's here. I mean, she cares about the people of Zendikar as well as the creatures of Zendikar, mm -hmm. as well as Zendikar as a whole. And I think that, that, the other tricksters knew that. So sure. she could sit there and say, hey, yeah, I'm a planeswalker too, Right. but they can fuck off whenever they want. I'm not going to do that. Right. And again, it doesn't matter whether that's true or not, is, is my right. point. Because as long as she convinces them that's all she has to do, they go along with her plan, and then great. They, she gets to do whatever she wants. Um, yeah, but in my mind, it is true. Like, I, you know, I think... Well, I think she needed to say it to convince them, but I don't think it's a lie. Well, again... You know what I mean? No, because, again, Nyssa is exactly the same way, if not more so, is, is my point. Like, Kiora doesn't necessarily know that, so right. she's talking out of her ass. Like, she may think that, like, well, they can leave whenever they want, but that's not... That wasn't their motivation. It never was, mm -hmm. and they never said it was. So she's just saying whatever she needs to say. That's why I'm saying... That's why I'm well, saying but I don't. What I'm saying is I think that's what she believes, whether or not she knows that it's true, doesn't mean that it's a lie if she believes it and she's saying. Sure, I guess she just believes it foolishly because she brought it up in front of the planeswalkers and they attempted to explain to her the reasoning behind it, right. and she was just like, "Nope, gonna kill them," and leaves. So, <laughs> okay, sure, she believes it because she's going la 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 la, and then just running around and doing whatever she wants. Leather jacket. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, but but that's my point. So, sure, maybe she believes it, but foolishly, right. you know. No, yeah, I mean, she doesn't have to be. <laughs> Right. Sure. Sure. She doesn't have to be right. Yep. Yeah. Um, the so we talked about Shen getting like brainwashed by Kozilek or controlled by Kozilek or whatever, and then dying or being killed, and immediately after, I mean seconds later, Lorthos, like a damn chump doesn't get a bite in, doesn't wrap a tentacle around Kozilek, nothing. Kozilek stabs, stabs, tears Lorthos in half, and just lets Lorthos and Kiora and Shen and the Bident just fall. And something that Kiora mentions, which I thought was amazing, I mean, talking about being cocky but slightly unsure, being happy and mocking, but, um, uh, but afraid of Ulamog in the back of her mind. She gets to this point of, she is in this story where she is cozy. The story that we've been hearing about, or these stories that we've been hearing about, Cozy the Trickster tricking Ulamog. Well, Ulamog is still Ulamog, but Kiora is Cozy. And Kiora is going to go over with her Biden and she's going to kill a god in Ulamog. All the planeswalkers are all the other people that are just going to watch it happen. They're not good enough to lick the, the scum from Kiora's boots. And she's going to be the one to kill a god. And then Kozilek shows up. And Does she wear boots? No. I think she's barefoot. <laughs> I think so, too. But Kiora comes to the realization of, oh, Kozilek's here. 
Well, in my story, I'm Kozilek. Ulamog's Ula, right? Or I'm Cozy. Ula is there. And then the people are the dolphins or whatever. Yeah. And I'm going to trick Ula and then kill him. And then Kozilek shows up. And then Kiora goes, oh, I thought I was Cozy. The, there's Cozy. I'm the one who's been tricked, right? Instead of Cozy, me, tricking Ulamog, now the real Cozy is here and tricking me. And that would be a cool realization right. for her. It's her just desserts. She deserves that in walking around like she's hot shit. Right. And then there's even more of a curveball thrown by the fact that Kozilek stabs Lorthos, stabs Lorthos, rips it in half, and Kiora's like, oh. Oh, okay. So I'm not being tricked by Kozilek. I am nothing to Cozy. There's a bident in my hand that is a god-killing weapon in my mind, and I am a god killer in my mind because gods ain't shit, but I'm the one that ain't shit. Because right. Cozy doesn't even know that I exist. The only reason that Cozy even attacks Lorthos is because it's a big thing that is near Kozilek that it doesn't that Kozilek doesn't want to have it there. <laughs> so exactly. stab, stab, rip in half, break Seagate and move on with his life. <laughs> he doesn't give a damn about Kiora, no pun intended. <laughs> exactly. He doesn't. And he doesn't, not that he doesn't even give a damn about it, he doesn't know she exists. Right. right? She's too small and insignificant. Correct. And the Biden is nothing. It's not, it's not like Kozilek, you know, it, I'll, I'll use the example because I mentioned it earlier. It's not like Dragon Ball Z, right, where somebody's just standing there and it's like, oh, there's a big power level over there. No. Kozilek has no concept of what the Bident is, doesn't give a shit that Kiora's down there. We'll talk about it in a minute, but I don't think Kozilek even knew that Shen was taken over by him. Right. Probably not. Probably Just not. nothing at all. Just, <laughs> there's a big thing. There is no longer a big thing. I made sushi. <laughs> <laughs> I think, um... <laughs> oh, man. I just, I just... I, and so, then, after that realization, then there's the ripping in half and Kiora falls. I just find it interesting. I think it's kind of like, it reminds me of, um, when, when there's like a token giant in a, in a movie or a TV show. Okay. And then there's like, you know, somebody with a weapon and they're like, ah, you know, they like stab <laughs> with a sword and like the giant's just like moving around and like doesn't even feel it. <laughs> you know, like that's how sure. I pictured like the Biden stabbing Kozilek. Yeah. If it were to stab <laughs> Kozilek. Like, I just feel like Kozilek wouldn't even notice. Yeah, or, it's like, or he might, like, turn around and, like, look at it and be like, oh, whatever. Yeah, it's like a splinter for us where you're like, oh, that's <laughs> annoying, and just flick it away. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Um, and the, the, the last big thing I wanted to talk about was Kozilek's, like, geometric things above his head. I don't exactly know what to call them, but the, like, black obsidian... Um, shards that float above Kozilek's head. I think obsidian was just used as like a descriptor for the color. Right. Because they're not made of rock. They're no. made of like negative space. They're made of void, yeah. And, <laughs> but I found it, the way that it was described was so interesting to me because I could, I could see it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I know what it looks like because I've seen it on the cards and stuff, but the cards don't do that description justice. Right. Um, where it talks about the fact that it's, it was mentioned as if it were a black hole multiple times. Um, and as you said, like just a void of space. the actual words black hole, even though that's exactly what they were describing. Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. Um, it was mentioned that when two of those pieces overlapped one another, I guess I'll do it this way for the camera, that when two of those pieces kind of turned and overlapped one another, it's as if they melded together instead of just... Like, you could see the defined outline of the top one over the bottom one. It was as if they became one thing that you could see through. And when Kiora was looking at it the first time, it mentions that she almost, like, lost herself in staring at them. And then, when she kind of shakes herself out of it, 
and turns to the side, Shen is, again, brainwashed, controlled, whatever you want to say, with those same geometric shapes, obviously smaller, over his head. And so... He got bit by the zombie. <laughs> <laughs> basically. And didn't tell anybody about the bite. He tried to hide it. And then when everybody was sleeping... Anyway. He became a zombie and ate them all. Exactly. Welcome to... God, I love zombie <laughs> movies and TV shows. It's, like, totally my thing. Um, <laughs> no, he didn't even realize that no. he had been bitten. No. <laughs> uh, but that, but that's, that's something that I wanted to talk about. Was that, is that just an effect of those things? Because we talked about the, we just talked about the fact that, um, Cozy, Kozilek doesn't give a damn about Kiora. So why would he care about controlling Shin? I don't think it was a purposeful choice. Right. I think it's just an effect of those structures over Kozilek's head. Yeah, I think it's kind of their way of like trying to make it a black hole without making it a black hole. So a black hole's a vacuum. Well, and it mentioned that it sucked all, it seemed to suck all surrounding light into it. So yeah. that makes sense. Okay, so it's sucking the light in. So maybe that's its way of like trying to... The writer's way, I guess, of or the designers of trying to say that, like, it's a black hole because it's kind of like sucking your consciousness in. So, like, even though, like, Shen isn't being sucked up into Kozilek's head, like, his physical body isn't going, Whoop! yeah, exactly. You know, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but his capacity to think has done that well but you know I, what i mean yes and no because it, it's not just his capacity to think because then shin tries to kill kiora so something's being put into him as well right it's yeah. not you know there's like something more there plus the fact that as soon as kiora kills him or deals a fatal blow to him the geometric shapes go away off of shin's head and shin seems to come back to himself and like numbly grabbing at the Biden and like shockingly staring at Kiora or shocked staring at Kiora yeah. and attempting to speak, but he's very much dying. Yeah. Uh, and so then she, you know, kicks him off or whatever. But like, so it's just it, that whole interaction is so interesting to me of like, what are these things? Like, this isn't something that, I mean, Kozilek is different from Ulamog in that Ulamog has the chalkiness, right? And the, the, the spawn of Ulamog are like the tongue Eldrazi that tend to consume everything around it. Tongue whereas, tongues. right, exactly. <laughs> whereas, whereas Kozilek seems to just distort everything that even when hitting into Seagate, he didn't seemingly didn't even make impact it's just that as his arm was coming down, it was distorting around the arm, it said. Wow. Like a magnetic field of some kind surrounding it. Right. And affecting and, things that it's hitting into. Right. And causing those geometric patterns to, to spark out from it. And the coloration of the, of the oil on water or whatever. Yeah. And that that's how that is affected in, in that way. Which, again, fascinating to me. Yeah. I find that so interesting. Yeah. So I, I'm not sure. I, I had thought Amy and I were talking again bef before we started. I had thought that maybe they would, they were the eyes, like co how Kozilek could see. But you brought up the Ulamog doesn't have eyes either. So uh, it, it that doesn't but, hold as much water. But maybe Ulamog doesn't see. Like maybe he doesn't need to see because he just around. senses or whatever. I don't know. But Kozilek seems to have a lot more to him. Than Ulamog does. Well, and that's also I again. I feel like it kind of builds, right? You've got Ulamog who just is hungry. shocks. The infinite hunger, right? And then you've got Kozilek who like does interesting shit. And then you've got Emrakul who like is, knows things, yeah. right? Sure. So I think it kind of builds in like their capacities. So maybe Kozilek can see those things. I don't know. I don't either. I, I again, it, that's what it, that's what it like said to me, 
when reading it was like, oh, maybe that's the eyes. Maybe that's how it does that. I, but I, it's very unclear. I, I'm, well, I'm not well, really sure. Well, describe to them the way you kind of described it to me. Because, like, they looked into them like you would look into somebody's eyes. Sure. That's a fair point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, I don't know. I, again, they were just very intriguing to me. So if people have other thoughts, as always, the, the comments down below, we would love to hear from yeah. you on, on anything that we talked about. And I guess last but not least, uh, I find it so interesting, right? Kiora falls into the water and just kind of sinks away, right? And is kind of says that she is uh, consumed by blackness. Now, does that mean that she loses consciousness? Does that mean that it's Lorthos's blood kind of clouding the water or whatever? Unclear. Or but... does it mean that she's just like in, in an area of the ocean that's really deep? Sure. It, it's unclear, but... As far as I know, I was trying to look this up, and if my very brief research is correct, and if it's not, comments down below, help me out, because I, I really want to know. I, I, I think this is important. The next time we see Kiora is in War of the Spark, where she exists again. Now, in no way did I think that she was dead. In fact, I'm pretty sure no one thought she was dead, because otherwise... I think it would have, at least for the, the, the avenues that we pursue in terms of reading up on people talking about planeswalkers and stuff, I feel like more people would have been excited to have seen Kiora. I know that in terms of, oh my god, that planeswalker is there, that discussion was very much about Soren Markov in War of the Spark, because how did he get out of the wall? Right yeah. there was, and there was no discussion on that. But how did he get out of the wall? <laughs> but that was the, that was the next block. After this one, where Soren is, it's, you know, Shadows Over Innistrad and then Eldritch Moon. So it's two sets later, maybe three if there was a corset in there somewhere, but but one corset? block. Yes, a corset. <laughs> uh, that's Olivia. Uh, but if there's, if there's one more block. Now extra knee is Olivia. <laughs> if there's one more block after this. That, that that's it's so interesting to me that that's what everyone focused on was oh wow Soren's there how did he get there whereas it's like wait Kiora's there I, I just I now having gone back and reading this and remembering it I'm like is this genuinely the last time we saw Kiora before War of the Spark why wasn't that a bigger deal I yeah, just you it know should have been because they don't tell you if she's alive or dead no I and mean they, and they kind of allude to her possibly being dead right and if you don't know enough about Kiora then maybe you feel like she is well but, that's but I think maybe you apply enough of a of an educated guess to that that you feel like she's not dead. Well, and I would argue, for me, this is my opinion personally, but I think you just, if you thought she was dead, you probably just don't know enough about fantasy stories. Like, you know, like, <laughs> if you don't, if it's a main-ish character, right. and you don't see them die, and even if you do, uh, they are likely not dead. And so, to me, just sinking into blackness is definitely not she is dead, right? I'm not that gullible, but... That's absolutely the, the, that they were putting it at least into question right. of like, what happens to her? When will we see her next? That's a fair thing. Yeah. I just but don't it was know. It's definitely like her resigning to the actual reality of just realizing how insignificant she is. I mean. Well, and I, I wrote the line here she loses Shen. Then she loses Lorthos, then she loses the Bident, and then the sinking into blackness could very well be her losing herself. And to be fair, after a situation like that, you probably should be reconsidering everything about your life, your existence, your decisions that you've made to get you to this point. Yeah. I mean, absolutely, that leather jacket we were talking about was gone at that point, but so is everything else. Right. I mean, she sits there going, all these people are dead, like, and I killed them, essentially, by leading them into this, like, fool's errand. Right. And so, yeah, I mean, she's in shock mm -hmm. when she, like, falls into darkness. That's just her, like, being in shock and not even being able to truly conceive of 
like where her mind's gonna go next. Yeah, she has to. Is, like all the grief and yeah. all the like disbelief and all of the like trying to like pick herself back up, reassess and figure out a new plan. Yeah, she's got to process everything that just happened to her, as well as the fact. I mean, a large portion of her life was now invalidated, right? Okay. She she says, you know, cozy got me or whatever, and then goes no, Kozilek. Right. right. She finally moves away from the childlike god figure that she was so playfully following that didn't yeah. care about her. And she was forced into realizing what that god really is. Yep. Yeah. So really, really interesting. Um, I... I I don't know. I mean, at this point, we're so far removed from these authors writing about Kiora that I have no idea. And we've already been back to Zendikar and didn't have Kiora. Right. So I, I can't imagine where her story will go next if and when we see her. It might make a bit of sense if, uh, if we see her again on Theros, but we've already been back to Theros and we didn't have a story, but she wasn't one of the cards. So right. it wouldn't make sense for her to be in the story if she wasn't in the cards. So I have no idea. I also don't know offhand and I'll, I'll go look after this. The Planeswalker card for Kiora from War of the Spark was Kiora Behemoth Beckoner. And she was mentioned in some of the supplemental free online stories, at least according to the, the wiki that I quickly perused <laughs> to remind myself of if we had seen her right. between this moment that we're reading about today and War of the Spark. Um, she was in like two of the supplemental stories with Rat that were put free online. Oh, really? um, yes, and I'm, I'm, tr I'm curious if at any point they mention her having the Bident in any of those, or if she has it in the picture for the card, Kiora Behemoth Beckoner. I don't remember, I'd have to double check. And you can do that yourself if you uh, find out the answer. Leave feel, the free to, feel free to leave it in the comments as well. Because uh, does she have it? Did she, I mean like, did she lose it in the water? Probably not, but Probably, is she- but that doesn't mean she couldn't have found it again. Right, it, but is she willing to go uh, and sift through the remnants of Lorthos at the bottom of the water to remind herself of her greatest failure and her presumably life-shattering realizations that right. she's come to. Like, is that okay to, you know, for her to do that? I mean, if it's soon enough after, probably. But if she kind of has to, like, go back for it, she probably would have waited a good long time. Yeah. So... Uh, very interesting, and yet, at the same time, a little unfortunate. I I'd like to say that I'd love to see Kiora soon, and that's not, and, and my hesitation is not to besmirch the new team that they have or the new authors that they bring in, because we've enjoyed Call Time, and we did those reviews, and, and we enjoyed Strixhaven, and we did those reviews to a degree. We enjoyed Strixhaven, okay. and we did those reviews, um, but it's just... This team did an exceptional job with building Kiora throughout this. Like, this is the third, I think, or fourth story just from Battle for Zendikar slash Oath of the Gatewatch where we had Kiora in it. Mm -hmm. And they did such a good job of giving us that arc of steals the Bident, gets to, to Zendikar, decides to fight the Eldrazi, and gets slapped the hell down. All right. And where are we to go from there? Well, looks like we're going to have to wait a decade or so, you know, whatever it happens to be. Yeah. Or at least, no, it's got to be, at this point, it's like five years, maybe six. But there's no sign of, I don't think she's coming up in Innistrad at the end of 2021. Yeah. So I don't know when we're going to see her next, if we're going to see her soon. Um, but Yeah, I mean, they could put her on a different plane. She's a planeswalker. Sure. And, you know, if she's just kind of wandering around trying to see what else she can do or whatever or trying to find herself at that point, then I guess they could shoehorn her in somewhere. But Yeah, I guess my fear I is... I doubt it. Right. I, just, I guess my fear is or my point is that 
if people didn't remember enough to be happy about her returning in War of the Spark, unlike Soren, then are they really going to be, like, is there really a call for when is Kiora coming back? Right. Because I don't, I didn't see it. That doesn't mean it didn't exist. I'm not, I'm not a baby where it's like, well, if, if it's not in my peripheral vision or it's not in my view, then it doesn't exist. <laughs> if you are aware of people having gotten to that point, always yeah. comments down below for anything. Or if, but, or if Cure is your favorite and you want to sit there in the comments and write a whole thing about how you're, you know, clutching your seat waiting to see her again. Please, please feel free to yeah. leave it in the comments. I'm, I mean, it, it would be nice, especially after having read this, but it's just like, you know, I, I read it, and then I thought, wow, you know, we didn't see her again until War of the Spark, and when are we going to see her next? And then I kind of went, oh. And it kind of felt like deflated a little bit. And maybe that's some negativity on my part, and it shouldn't be that way. So I'd love to hear people's thoughts on it in general. So anyway, I don't know that I had anything else to say about this one. Yeah. Okay. I mean, the cool thing about it's going to be a while before we see Kiora again mm -hmm. is they can kind of go anywhere with that character now. We, you know, we, we, in this story, we've seen her kind of lose herself. When we saw her in War of the Spark, it was so, like, ambiguous, I guess you could yeah, say. Yeah, of course. Where, like most of those walkers, they just shoehorned in there. Where they could, when they go forward with her story, they could make her whoever they want. It doesn't have to be us sitting here in Jar saying, well, this is incorrect characterization, again. You know, because they can kind of make her whoever they want at that point. Because, you know, she's going to be older and wiser, and she will have learned her lessons, and you will not have seen yet where that's taken her. Right. I guess my skepticism just comes from the fact that I'm hoping that we um, actually see that she has learned her lesson. Yeah. That they actually focus on that, even though it's been six years since we got to that point. I hope. Yes. And it I'm, will be I'm very disappointing if we see her again and she's got the leather jacket back on. That and I was... Be... Yeah. That would be annoying. I was going to say, obviously, I, I unfortunately, I'm not super optimistic, but I, I'm looking, I, nonetheless, I will be keeping my eyes open for it because I, I want that. I want to yeah. see that happen. Um, and so, that would be a great story, too. I mean, you know, if, sure you're, if you're looking to figure out some, some good story beats, FYI. there sure are some here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, it, and again, as I've said in the past, and I, I don't know, at this point, I don't know what type of um, background work the authors are doing these days. Right. But I know that when they brought in uh, other authors for the first time, so that it was starting, I think, with um, Dominaria, that when they brought in outside authors for the first time, there was not... It, it, it would have been a lot of work, but there would there was not enough background work done, in our opinion, right. to have given the author enough uh, background to have properly written about all of the characters that they were writing about. Now, granted, Kaldheim had just um, Kaya as the only returning Planeswalker character. Mm -hmm. So that should have given a lot less work for those authors to have done. Right. You would There's have needed to read... a lot of space there, because it's a newer character that doesn't have a ton of characterization to begin with, and then a whole bunch of brand new characters. Right. So all they would have needed to read were any uh, conspiracy or conspiracy two stories that Kaya was in, and the two War of the Spark novels. To my knowledge, those are the only... Uh, backstory pieces that they would have needed to read where Kaya was present, and then if there were any cards with, like, flavor text or whatever that they cared to include, that would take seconds at, at the most. Um, but that's Kaya. In Strixhaven, you had Kazmina. She existed previously, but again, as many people have correctly pointed out, we know nothing of her at all. Right. You have Luca, Got to read one book for Luca, okay, for for um, Ikoria or Ikoria. 
And then and the information that exists about him contradicts itself anyway. So good luck with that one. Ding. Uh, and <laughs> then uh, the twins, again, the Throne of Eldraine story, which they obviously read, plus um, like maybe some of the Battle Bond stories. Yeah. Or the maybe. sorry, no, there were no Battle Bond stories. There was the, like the Planeswalker's Guide to Call yeah. to um, to uh, Battle Bond. And or it the was World big Bond enough where I don't like. Like, you technically met the two of them, but you didn't learn anything about them. Right, really. and so so they would have to read that just to get the cursory knowledge, and then whatever. Uh, and Kylem, I think, is the, the world. So it would be Planeswalker's Guide to Kylem. Anyway, I was trying to think of it. but um, And then there was Liliana. And that one, you know, yeah. they would have only had to read the new Liliana stuff because, you know... The Liliana stuff that doesn't make any damn sense. So, I think that can be an okay place to end before we go way <laughs> off topic because yeah. I brought up Liliana and I shouldn't have done that. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> um, but, uh, that is going to be the end of this particular episode of JAR. I want to thank each and every one of you for watching. Before you go, as we mentioned earlier, please don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. They'll be popping up on the screen and stuff as well, but down below, that's where those buttons are for you. Um, you can check out our other channels. Links down in the description box below. We'd appreciate that. Video Games for All is doing some amazing things right now. We've got, at minimum, Pokemon Silver, our, play, our Amy's blind playthrough of Pokemon Silver, as well as uh, us playing through The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Uh, and there are, and there's... Um, our Sunday videos as well that, that have been a lot more varied. Those are shorter series. Uh, I think we're going to get into a longer one soon, so stay tuned for that. But, but we're pumping out videos. Three a week on that channel and two to three a week on this channel. <laughs> it depends on the, the situation. Thank you for bearing with us uh, for uh, as we took a week-ish off because we had a little bit of stuff going on, uh, and so we, we appreciate your patience. Um, and we did not want to rush through putting out a jar. This one was, uh, especially, was, you know, all of it them are deserved important. deserved the time. Exactly. And they all do. They really all do. Um, you know, even if we're like, yeah, we didn't love this one, we still try to give it our best to talk about it and give our opinions and right. et cetera. So, like I said, thank you for bearing with us on that. We hope to be back next week with the continuation of this. And then if and when they announce stories for um, the Adventures in the Forgotten Realms set, We'll review those. I, I doubt that it's coming. I do. But if it is, I mean, we're going to keep our ear to the ground. So if it's if it's coming, we'll get into those reviews and, and let you know how those are going to look. Um, and if not, we'll continue we with these. We'll ahead of time because no. they won't let us know ahead no. of time. But, <laughs> but follow us on our socials. Those links are down in the description. Or come join us on stream. If you hear something and you're afraid that we didn't, come let us know. We would Please. love to, uh, to have you join us. So... And that's 8 to 10 p.m. every Monday and Friday. Again, MTG Arena on Mondays, video games on Fridays. So, uh, that is the end. But if you want to tell us your feelings on Kiora, where you saw her uh, last, and when you hope to see her next, that's a way to join us in showing off your... Hashtag Vorthos Pride. Thank you all so very much, sincerely, for watching. We hope to be back next week with more JAR. And for now, from us here at the Geek for All family of channels, I've been Joe. And I'm Amy. And as we always say, in whichever video of ours you watch next, we will see you all next time. Thanks, everybody.